gamers, today we are back with guides. The new season has just started. It is February 17th. And it's time to do an Abbasid guide. I'm probably going to do guides for the sieves that had the most changes. Again, I mentioned this in the previous guide for previous season that I made. If a sieve has not changed too much, I will probably not be making a guide for that sieve. Abbasid um, guide hype. The reason for that is, if not much has changed, I don't want to just make a video to update you guys, right? But Abbasid is one of the sieves that got the most changes. So in this video, what I'm going to cover is a couple of things i'm going to cover the eco uh, economic wing uh opening in feudal trade wing and military wing so a culture wing i will keep for another video where i'm going to show you guys a culture wing uh build opening for abbasid against any civ because i feel like that one is very unique and you kind of need to play into cast a little bit so for today we're going to stick to the three wings and i'm going to talk about all the changes that abbasid has received so just to make sure you guys are you know, updated. Maybe if you don't read patch notes or something, uh, you'll know. So number one thing that's changed for Abbasid uh, is fresh foodstuffs is now in town center. Uh, it is no longer in House of Wisdom and economic wing in House of Wisdom got a different upgrade. Now, as you can see, it reduces the cost of the village by 35%. So this has been nerfed a lot. Uh, a lot of people thought that this is a buff. This is not a buff, this is a nerf, uh, because your villagers now are not costing 25 food anymore, they cost 32 food. And now, this might not seem like a, lot, a big difference, but when you're on 2, 3, 4 TCs, this makes a big, big difference in your food economy, and if, if you haven't played Abbasid in a while, you will definitely notice it. So the opening is pretty standard, I'm not gonna, like, you know, 7 on food, you build House of Wisdom and the first house with the food villagers, and then you rally 4 onto the gold. So pretty standard now this thing is a nerf now it is accessible to any wing so you can go military wing and get this so in that way it's a buff but specifically going for the economic wing uh it is a nerf because um just how much more food you have to use and another thing that i don't see talked about too much is to upgrade this you need to lose a villager so villager takes 20 seconds this upgrade 20 takes 20 seconds if you upgrade this you lose a villager right you have one villager less which makes this upgrade a lot more expensive than it is and it also takes a lot more to pay off uh than you might think so i can't remember we actually ran the numbers last week on my twitch chat in my with my twitch chat and it takes like somewhere like eight minutes to pay off with one tc so this thing is uh good to get immediately on one tc if you plan to stay on one TC for like eight minutes plus. If the game might end before then, then it's probably not going to pay off in time. And obviously, if you're on two TC or planning to more than two TC, this is very much worth it because you're going to reduce the cost on two TCs at the same time. Now, uh, in this specific replay, so I have three replays for you guys. In this specific replay, we're going to cover the economic wing. And I told you guys that the economic wing has... Uh, doesn't have fresh foodstuffs anymore. Instead, it has Fertile Crescent. And what it does is reduces the cost of eco economy buildings and houses by 25%. Now, this counts for a lot of stuff. So this counts for e economy buildings, by the way, are mills, military camps, lumber camps, houses, obviously, like it says. Farms get reduced by 25%, which is pretty huge, probably the best one. And then TCs are also reduced in cost by 25%. So you should only go economic wing uh, if you plan to go multiple TCs. Now, the new Abbasid is not like the old Abbasid. The old Abbasid is you go economy wing like every game on, on land. Every single one. Doesn't matter what your plan is, you go economy wing. Now you have more options depending on how the game is developing in the early game against what civ you're playing and what map you're playing. So I'm going to try to cover those things as well. So in this specific case... I will try to show you guys uh, me going for multiple TCs, so I will be going for economic wing. Uh, once you have seven on food and then four on gold, I will rally uh, the workers onto their food until I have enough to, to age up and then you're going to immediately click up to feudal. Um, one thing I want to say is this is a build, this is an upgrade you want to get immediately once you age up, but fresh food stuffs you want to get as your second TC is finishing, you want fresh foodstuffs to finish. So you get like the most value uh, possible out of it. Because 
the moment you hit feudal, you don't want to get this immediately because you would rather get a villager to get that extra income so you can get that extra TC faster. Um, so you want to get this basically done or finishing as your second TC is finishing. So I'm going to keep mining gold here. Now I'm rallying on to the wood line, by the way, and I'm only keeping five on food, as you can see. And everything else is being rallied onto the wood until I have eight on wood. Uh, the moment I have 50 wood after lumber camp, I'm going to build a mill and I'm going to start wheelbarrow as well. Um, as my eco wing is finishing, you will notice that I'm still mining gold. And the reason why I'm still mining gold is because I want to make sure I get all the upgrades. So still five on food, eight on wood, and I'm going to start rallying onto the stone wall to get that second uh, and third TC. So... Still mining gold, still mining gold, and you will need to mine extra gold compared to before because now you basically got extra upgraded you need to get. Before you would just get fresh food stuff, the wheel bear, and you're done. But now you need extra 75 gold, which once you mine, to, to have like a point to know when to stop, is when the gold mine is 3550, that's when you stop mining the gold, okay? So if you look now, my thing my uh, feudal upgrade finishes i'm gonna get this immediately i'm getting a house so i don't get supply block i'm getting a mining camp and once i have 3550 i stop mining gold that's all the gold you need so now i'm upgrading this i'm getting wheelbarrow and i have enough gold for fresh food stuffs now i do want to say another thing that's very very important i haven't made an abyssid guide in a while uh but golden age is extremely important to reach immediately the reason for that is because of the tier one which is villager gathering rate plus 15 percent for all resources this is one of the most insane uh passive benefits i guess i don't know what to call them that any civilization has if you think about it 15 percent gathering speed on everything is crazy so what I'm doing right now is I built the house so I don't get supply blocked. I built the mining camp because I want to start mining and I'm sending all the villagers there, the gold ones included. So I'm going to wait for this to finish and then I'm going to immediately throw down extra three houses or a lumber camp at two houses. The reason for that is, uh, the reason, why, by the way, the reason why it's six is because this is not connected. <clears throat> so I'm going to throw down extra houses to get the... Uh, golden age one immediately so that my gathering speed gets increased so you'll see now i'm waiting for it to finish i already have enough wood and the reason why i want it to finish is because i'll get the discount so now the houses are 37 wood um there we go i think i cancel this one and i make it here yeah so once that finishes boom now i have golden age tier one and villagers are gathering faster which is Perfect timing because I got a bunch of workers on stone, I got workers on wood, and I'm trying to get those TCs up. So, um, let me take off my headset, it's bothering me a little bit. So, once we do this, um, when do you go economic wing? Let's talk about that. Economic wing is, uh, in my opinion, a play that you can go against any sieve, but sometimes you would rather go other wings, like military, which I'll explain later, or trade wing if you just want to trade or if you're playing team games or whatever. Uh, if you go economic wing, like I would probably not advise to go for that if you're playing against like you're getting tower rushed, you know, and, and you're going economic wing, probably not the best thing. Uh, but if you're playing against the sim, like maybe like China or Abyssin Mirror, economic wing is definitely the way to go. And I would advise you to test all the wings yourself and see which one you like the most. Because before Abbasid, like I said, was very one-sided, uh, very linear in the terms of what it can do. It was always echoing. Now I generally feel like you have options and some options are better in certain situations. So I can tell you like, oh yeah, against this, it always go this way, right? Uh, but if you're an Abbasid main or if you play Abbasid, this is something that you're gonna have to test yourself and figure it out. So this is very important. No matter which wing you go for, you can still go for multiple TCs. And uh, I'll talk more about that with the military wing later. Now, if you're going economic wing and you're going more than one TC extra. So if you're going for two TCs, I would get enough stone, which is 262 and 300 wood. And I would probably make a TC like here 
or maybe here in between the two berry patches because you want to secure food but if your plan is to go for two extra tcs what you should always do is build that the second tc next to the stone and this is a mistake i even see conquer three players do where they get enough stone and then they go make a tc here and then they like either run back or their third tc is so extremely delayed so what you should do is the moment you have enough resources boom i pop a tc right there I speed build it with all the workers that are on stone. Then I'm gonna go back onto the stone. And if my end goal is three TCs, I'm going to make the third one on the food source. So in this game, I went for it here because this side could be easily wallable. So I get these for free basically. And once you do that, what the next step is, is completely up to you. So, um, it's completely up to you like you can rush castle you can attack you can harass whatever i do want to say if you are playing against an aggressive civ like super super aggressive civ like french you do want to make a barracks before you get a second dc for obvious reasons you're gonna have you're gonna get harassed by knights uh so you do want to get a barracks first if you are going for that uh maybe put nine or ten villagers on wood to make up for the fact that you made a barracks and just get a couple of spearmen out you will have enough food as you can see i have extra food and that's what the extra food is for um or if you're playing against whatever ottoman uh the moment you hit a feudal you can make an archer range make one or two archers to push it with a spearman and then just continue with your build normally so instead of doing eight villagers in wood uh as you usually would maybe you do nine or ten so that's how you should think about it. Um, the reason why I don't do it here is because I'm playing against an AI and yeah. So this is uh, dependent on which city you're playing against. Like if you're playing against HRE, there's probably a very high chance they won't do anything or China. So you can just go like this. Uh, but if you're playing against a city that's gonna put some pressure, then make a barracks, make an archery range, you know, whichever one you need. You will delay your second TC by like 10, 20, 30 seconds, but that's what you gotta do. So, um, as I'm getting my third TC, I'm just chopping, chopping, chopping. I'm gonna go over here and make the last one like I mentioned earlier. And of course, if you're playing against an aggressive civ, you need spearmen here, just to make sure you don't actually lose villagers. Now, this is the question where a lot of people get confused, where it's like, okay, well, what do I do now? And there's no right answer. I mean, it's completely up to you. Um, so what I mean by that is there's multiple different situations, right? There's a situation of if you are playing against China, you probably want to just age up to castle immediately because that's what China most likely will do. And this is where you should scout. Uh, if you're playing against French and you're getting full on attack, you need to add more military buildings or you will die. If you're playing against any civ that's currently attacking you, you need to uh rally like one tc onto the wood line or maybe even two tcs onto the wood line one on food and then just produce units and try to fight off your opponent if they're going horsemen or knights you make spearmen if they go uh you know archers you can either go archers yourself or you can go for horsemen so you can go spearmen and horsemen against cavalry uh based play styles that is completely up to you again try it out see which one you like now i would suggest at this point when you start your third tc i would suggest putting like three or five workers on gold almost immediately because abbasid is a civ that scales the most with um with eco upgrades and the reason for that is very obvious you have the most workers you're going to be producing crap ton of workers so getting any eco upgrades double broadax or getting horticulture because you have a golden age on top of that you will be just be mowing down resources super quickly and allow your economy to just go batshit insane. So the reason why I like putting 3-5 villagers is because I like getting those upgrades. Or if you're getting pressured really hard by, you know, a, a cavalry civ or an archer civ, you can also get a blacksmith and start those upgrades uh, very quickly as well. As you can see here, I'm doing this little wall that I talked about. So now these back barriers are also safe. My main TC is safe here. My gold is kind of safe in between these two TCs and the deer are safe. And that's how you always want to plan Abbasid base building. Now, Golden Age 2, you shouldn't rush or do anything with it. Um, 
you only get research speed 15%, which is not that big of a deal. So from here on out, you know, make sure your buildings are in range of the House of Wisdom, but you know, don't obsess uh, too much with it. Now, like I said, if you're playing against an aggressive, probably go Spearman Archer or Spearman Horseman and just mass mass units to defend. If you're going for archers, a lot of archers, you want two TCs in wood, one TC in food. If you're going for very horseman, spearman heavy comp, you're probably going to need only one TC on wood and two TCs on food because that unit comp consumes a lot more food. And you still want to put three or five, three, four, five villagers on gold to get those upgrades. Now, uh, the second style that I talked about is going for um, more mobile stuff to harass. So you can go horseman camel archer here if the opponent is playing passive. You can go Horseman Camel Archer and you put pressure on them while you're booming with 3TC. Um, or the third option is from here on out, you have like, uh, you rally 1TC onto the gold and 2TC onto the food and you just go for, you know, fast as possible age up into the castle. And this is most commonly done versus uh, sims like China. Because you can't really pressure China because of Barbican and their TCs are very strong. So that's something you can do as well. And then after that, it completely depends on how the game plays out and so on and so forth. If you are playing in, uh, against an HRE, for example, you do want to go Horseman Camel Archers because if you don't and they're rushing castle, they will uh, simply be able to pick up all the relics. So you want to build Horsemen and, and uh, Camels to... I don't know if I said Horse Archers. Um, camel Archers to deny that. Now that is in a nutshell how you play the eco wing, what is your goal with the eco wing, and how you should transition out of it. Whenever you are in, in like a situation where you don't know if you should be getting more wood or food, just look at what you're making. If you're making horsemen, you're going to need a lot of food. If you're making spearmen, you're going to need a decent amount of food. If you're making archers, you're not going to need a lot of food, but you're going to need a crap load of uh, wood. So there it is. Now let's go into the next one where I go military wing and show you a replay of that and then we're gonna go into the trade wing now obviously I'm not going to discuss everything in depth again with the military wing like I'm not gonna explain uh like house of wisdom golden age one and, and fresh food stuffs and all that so these ones are probably gonna be quicker I'm just gonna give you guys an explanation when and and how you should be going for these so the build will be exactly the same all the way up to feudal nothing changes so it's all same there so when should you go military wing for those that don't know military wing has been changed and military wing now spawns two spearmen and one archer in feudal age now another thing i forgot to mention uh with the eco wing build because i know people are going to ask this which wing do you tech up to castle that again depends on your style so if you want to go like mass cavalry and, and camel archers or you just want to play passive i would probably say go for culture wing because it will reduce uh your research upgrades by 20 percent and it will also reduce your next age up by 20 percent so imperial age up will be cheaper if you want to fight and you go eco wing first and then you want to fight in castle with a lot of infantry you know just balls to the wall and try to kill your opponent then i would say go eco wing into military because you will get access to boot camp which is very very strong for any kind of timing push and also this is another thing that's changed by the way uh composite bows you can you guys can see because of the camera composite bows has been moved from imperial age to castle and it's been moved in house of wisdom and it reduces the reload time of archers by 33 percent so this is another reason why you can go military wing in castle uh from economy uh, economic wing because it just gives you way stronger archers now with that being said let's go into the military wing so when do you build military wing uh military wing can obvious one is if you want to be extremely aggressive in feudal right so you can have that but that's not the real strength of, of military wing the real strength is if there are some civs for example I, i'll use mongol uh, as an example of this mongol can tower rush you right mongol can go spearman tower rush or horseman tower rush so what's the benefit of going economic wing against mongols not a lot and the reason for that is uh, your houses and eco buildings and TCs are cheaper and that's all great 
but you can't really mine stone or chop wood when there's a tower like here or here, right? So it's kind of pointless to go economic wing because you can't really get the value out of it almost immediately. So it's going to be idle for a while. So instead, what you can do when playing against Mongo, you can open military wing. So why is this good? Uh, two spearmen won't do much against the tower, right? I think we can all agree and Mongo will probably have four to six or maybe even eight spearmen. But the one archer is the key here. The one archer will be able to delay or sorry, deny further tower rushing. So let's say your opponent did the first tower here to deny your wood line. If he goes around, by the time he goes around and plants a tower here, you will be the military wing will finish. And remember, the moment military wing finishes, the two spearmen and archer will come out. And then the archer can deny his villager making an extra tower. And not only that, but you will have three units and you can build a ram with immediately because you're Abbasid and you, you don't need to research siege engineering. So this is the strength of the military wing in the new patch. It's not necessarily that you get this and you should go all in with it in feudal. It's the fact that you can skip production buildings and you can uh, defend a lot of stuff without actually investing into production buildings. Now, this might be one of those things where people say like, oh yeah, but then your TC is more expensive. Yes, but if you wanted to build an archer from economic wing, you would need to spend 150 wood for archer range. You would need to spend the villager build time, which is probably going to be extra 20 resources on that. And then you're going to need to build an archer, which is extra, uh, I don't know how much it is, 80, 90 resources. So if you actually went economic wing, you would save almost identical amount of stuff, except the military wing will allow you to defend the push faster. Uh, you can also get value out of it if you're playing against horseman mongol because you will get two spearmen. You can also do this against uh, ottomans, for example. Any sieve that has some kind of super early aggression, you can go military wing. And it's not something you do just every game. It depends against what sieve you're playing against. So it is a situational upgrade uh, wing choice, in my opinion. So what do you do after that? And this is again, uh, you know, in the last patch, people always thought of military wing and military wing as like, you go military and then you all in, but that's not necessarily the case. You don't need to do that. And I'll show you what I mean right here. So let's say we were playing against the Mongo. Let's say we were playing against an aggressive sim. My opener so far, is exactly the same as the economic wing. Nothing's different. I'm doing everything the same. And look at this. The military wing is about to finish, and this is the new patch thing. Two spearmen and an archer spawn, and the AI runs the scout into my TC. Let's go. So, my build so far is exactly the same. The only difference is, I got military wing, right? Now, I do want to say, I told you earlier, for uh, economic wing, you want to stop mining gold at 3550. With military wing or culture wing, you want to stop mining gold at 3,500 exactly because this upgrade costs 75 gold, but all the other upgrades cost 125, as you can see. So you're going to need to mine extra 50 gold. Remember that. Here's the uh, the work account. Again, it's exactly the same as economic way. So I'm building a mill here. Um, And because I went military, I don't have five on food, I have four because I have units already. <clears throat> so now these units can be used to push away the Mongol. You can even make a ram now if you want to. If there was a tower here, I can just make a ram immediately and kill the tower before the Mongol even upgrades it, right? So there's a lot of possibilities. So I'm getting the boot camp. It's pretty cheap. It's 50 food and 125 gold, which you're getting before you move away anyway. So you might as well get it. So what is my plan from here now? Well, maybe this is a game because I play against an aggro sim. I don't want to be going for three TCs. Maybe I just want to go an extra TC, right? So what I'm going to do is what I talked about earlier. I'm going to need more resources, obviously. I'm going to need the full amount. And this time, I am not building a TC here because I'm only getting one extra TC. So I'm going to go and I'm going to secure a food source over here. Again, this side can be walled, so I can wall right here, and these food sources are going to be safe. So I'm securing the 
other deer pack food source and you can use archers to pick off the deer like this next to the tc which is very nice and from here on out what is my plan well if you're getting same thing as economic weight nothing changes if you're getting attacked make, make more production and fight especially you would probably want to stick with infantry because you do have boot camp so now my spearmen got bonus 12 health and my archer has bonus 10 health all my archers and all my spearmen so in this situation i would probably go spearman archer to defend or push my opponent um you can also just age up to castle if that's that's what you want to do that's completely fine if you think you can survive you can also go for an extra tc that's not a wrong thing to do but i'm just giving you as an example of how to play military wing in kind of very defensive into very aggressive play style and again if you're going to be aggressive with archer or spearman i'd put one tc on wood one tc on food and i would take uh three four five workers and put them on gold because you still want to get the upgrades amazing uh from military wing assuming you're not going to make more tcs uh for the rest of the game uh i would probably go culture wing second uh the reason for that is you can go economic wing but i feel like you're gonna be you've already built so much of your infrastructure and tcs and like military or sorry economic buildings or houses that you might not get as much value from the economic wing unless you plan to add extra tcs or transition to farms super fast because farms also get reduced in cost don't forget that but culture wing will almost give you a better deal assuming that uh you have all your eco set up uh, except farms because the culture wing will just reduce upgrades on everything so you will also get benefits from that so there it is now the third one is the trade wing now trade wing is possible uh let me restart this so i can show you something the trade wing in 101 is possible it's not the best thing but if you if you if you wanna go for it that's fine but this is more so for team games because uh you know trading in team games is always good doesn't matter which matchup you play but it is possible in one on ones so the one difference that i do here is i send my scout to the corner first and why is this important because house of wisdom placement is very important so i scout here i missed the sheep kick w and i missed another one here so i see no market and this is dry arabia so the, if the market is not here it spawned along this line all the way to the bottom in this case it has like the best possible spawn location so i build my house of wisdom the farthest away possible from the bottom side right now you don't want to build your house of wisdom here because you still want to get the golden age and in order to get the golden age you need to have a uh, house of wisdom connected to your main tc and all the other buildings so i don't want to build my house of wisdom here i just want to build it farthest away possible for now and i'll i'll show you guys in a bit why um from here on out again we're doing the exact same build so i'm going to speed it up exact same as the military one and economic one the only difference is we will be going for trade wing first and you can already rally this house of wisdom onto the neutral market by the way because for those that don't know trade wing now for abbasid spawns three traders immediately when you age up so again exactly the same build but we will not be going for extra tcs so right now the build is exactly the same the reason we don't want to go for extra tcs is that would make any fucking sense right if i wanted to go extra tcs i would just go eco wing uh so if you're you are going for trade wing you should probably just commit to you know actually doing trading because trading or you know making more villagers in tc is economy either way so if you go trade wing and you make tcs you're probably gonna die because you're too greedy so um what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna try to get golden age immediately that's the very important one as you can see my buildings are connected i have six buildings right now with the mill that's not connected so i'm gonna try to build extra like lumber camps and whatever else pretty pretty fast so same thing here you're gonna be mining gold until you have 3.5k 
I'm gonna immediately get Grand Bazaar because it uh, allows your traders to return with a secondary resource. This resource is 25% of the base gold value and is set at the market. Now, what is my goal now with the trade wing? First thing I wanna do is if the opponent sees you're going trade wing, they will attack you most likely. They will immediately attack you. So what I want to get first is military buildings. I wanna make sure I have an army to defend this because the trade value is crazy good. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding a barracks. Oh, I think actually here I forgot to get um, Golden Age. So you can go for these two buildings and then just make one or two extra houses in order to get Golden Age. And I'm going to be rallying my TC. Uh, I'm going to kind of be swapping back and forth. Someone wood, someone food. But in general, you want to have around somewhat equal worker count for both of those but a little bit extra on the wood because I'm going to be producing a lot more buildings so I need extra wood and I'm producing archers so I need wood and I'm going to be making traders so I need wood for that too. Now once I've produced uh, production buildings and once I'm reaching golden age the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a market in the corner. So for those that don't know my traders already picked up gold and X secondary resource which is food because I upgraded the thing in the house of wisdom. So they're getting 79 to 19. Now I'm gonna build a market here. And the moment market finishes, look at this. They're almost done. They're almost about to deliver. If you change if you select them and you just click on the market and you change the trade route, they will actually adjust the resources they have on them based on the full distance, even though they did not start on that market. So now each trader is giving me 156 gold and 39 food. Now, with the other two wings, I went back on gold because um, I wanted to get upgrades, but obviously because I'm going trade wing, I don't need to do that. So my market is done. You can set this on food or wood. I would probably say food. Um, and you can see my, my spread out in resources right now what it is. I'm gonna rally someone to the food and I'm gonna be keep producing spearmen and archers to defend. Now, if the map is more closed off, obviously Dry Arabia is not the greatest map for trading because it's so open. But if the map is more closed off, you can now start walling off uh, sections of the map so that the enemy cannot kill your traders. And the next thing I want to do with my gold, because this is 450 gold, this is a very juicy delivery. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start producing traders. They're 40-40 for Abbasid. And that's one of their civ things. So I'm going to start producing traders immediately. Because I don't have second TC, I do have a market. So that's my kind of economic boom. And the moment that delivered gold, look what I got in queue. I got double broad axe. I got horticulture. I got forestry. And I can build a blacksmith and start a plus one weapons or plus one armor for melee or range, whatever. And... Probably what you want to do at this point is have 13 15 villagers on wood while constantly producing units constantly producing workers uh, I already got fresh food stuffs by the way the moment I got 125 gold Because this is gonna be a long game. So the faster I get fresh food stuffs You know, it's gonna be better because it's gonna take a bit to pay off And from here on out I guess I left the game, but there's not much to to go on from there from here on out my goal is to continue making traders. If you have insane amounts of resources, you can also do like the trade trick where you put a market here, set a whole market on this one and then shift it back. Or you can just make another market here and just could, like start double producing traders and, and pop up, pump up your economy even more. From here on out, when you have 13 to 15 villagers on wood, that will sustain you enough to be able to produce traders, buildings, army, whatever especially with double broad axe and golden age and everything else you want to rally on food so your traders are giving you gold and food and the reason why you, you want to rally everything on, on food is because eventually you do want to age up and remember if you have too much gold you can also buy food and then buy into castle whatever else uh but that's it for abbasid like i said uh i hope i helped you guys with the the new season abbasid um it has received a lot of changes, Hustle Wisdom specifically. I covered the three wings and the last wing, which is the culture wing, that is also changed. Uh, I will probably make another video 
sometime soon. I do want to do other Civ guides first and then we'll go back to the culture wing. So if you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new and I hope this helps you uh, play Abbasid into this new season, season four. If you're watching on YouTube, check me out on Twitch. I'm probably live right now because I stream all the time. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, we're going to hit the ladder. The new season has literally just started. Thank you, YouTubers, Twitch gamers. Let's keep going.